Well, good morning, everybody. It's Dave coming from the paddock here in Southern Maryland. It's Friday. It is July 5th. It's a little bit earlier. It's about 8.45. Um, it's going to be hot today. We're talking about mid to upper 90s, and it's already super humid. So I've left all the doors down. I've actually turned the AC on here in the paddock, which is rare for me, but just I think it's going to be needed today. Um... Let's see, before we get too far, well, I guess I should address the hat. Really, uh, I'm copying, plagiarizing, if you will, Corvette Jim. I like this hat. It's, uh, it's nice light. You can see right through it. So it doesn't retain any heat. It's a Stetson, or so it tries to claim it is. I think it says Stetson backwards for you guys. I'm not sure it's a Stetson, just because there's a label in there. Might be a Stitson or a Stinson or a Stapson, right? Who knows? But it says Stetson. Amazon did a pretty nice job of smashing it in the shipping process, so it took a while to get it back. But anyway, Jim, I loved yours. I like how it looks. Nice summer hat. Probably get a white Stetson straw hat when I go back to Wyoming. Probably headed back there next week. I need to be back in Maryland by about August 13th. So if I, it's uh, my six days round trip now because i got to drive both ways with Sasha. So if I leave Monday or Tuesday, that gives me almost a month out there. So let's see. Before we get too far into it, let's remember Red. Let's remember everybody deployed people. Especially seems especially appropriate today. A lot of people couldn't celebrate Um Independence Day yesterday because they are out practicing Independence Day. You know, a lot of people out there, you know, deployed within the United States, but so many deployed outside the United States in pretty horrific conditions. Many of them being shot at today. I think those situations are only going to degrade. So let's remember those who stand out in front of us and say, no one's going to harm me today. Not today. I'm the one on the wall. Well, thank you for that, guys. So today, I want to do Freedom Friday. I want to go back and start reviewing some of the things I've done before. I haven't. I'm going to show you my EDC, my everyday carry today. Um, in my opinion, this is the most important weapon in your arsenal. It's the thing that you keep on you and with you pretty much at all times. And I think as the next few weeks and months go by, pretty much should be eliminated, and you should just have your weapon with you at all times. Now, I'm mainly speaking to my U.S. audience. I get that. I mean, all you people in the foreign lands that let all your rights get stolen, that's, I can't speak to you anymore. That's water under the bridge, and I don't think you're going to get them back. So if you want, you can click off. <clears throat> if you're not interested in weapons discussion, you can click off. You know, if you can't, if you can't conceal carry... You know, this is probably not for you. If you can't own a weapon, this isn't for you. I get it. So I'm choosing to continue to hopefully, you know, be an ambassador for weapons and be an ambassador for concealed carry and be an ambassador for actually carry EDC. It could save your life. It could save a family member's or a loved one or a friend or... You know, who knows, maybe you have to get engaged and save the life of somebody else who isn't your family member. So as most of you know, I live in the state of Maryland half the time and the state of Wyoming half the time. And they really couldn't be any further apart on the gun ownership spectrum. Here in the People's Republic of Maryland, um, only because of the Supreme Court, they are now a shell issue state. So they, they have to issue you a carry permit. You know, unless you're a felon, a convicted felon or something like that. So it's much easier today to get it. Um, I've had mine about five years, and it was a it was a will state. You had to prove you needed it or um, warranted it. So I've had mine now. I've had it renewed. I'm now in the five-year renewal cycles, so um, I probably won't need to renew it for another three years. In Wyoming, they've become a constitutional carry state, so anybody, in-state resident, out-of-state resident, can carry either open carry, which means you can see the weapon, or you can conceal carry, 
which means you can't see the weapon on the individual. So, and then I have a lot of states in between as I traverse those three day drives. I go through a lot of states, one of them being the Colorado, and um, they are one of the most gun unfriendly states. So, I have to be very careful about if I choose to carry a weapon on the trip, how do I do that? So, we can talk about lawful transportation of firearms typically they're all over the map and in fact different counties inside of different states have different rules but pretty much the most strict way to be compliant is to make sure you have two locking containers you put the unloaded weapon in one and lock it you put all your ammunition and your magazines in the other and lock it and both need to be stored outside of the driver's wingspan, which usually means in an SUV, in what I call the way back, all the way back, not in the second row, not in the third row, but all the way back in the luggage area. Or if you have a more traditional vehicle in the trunk, or I guess if you have an EV, the frunk, but you cannot have access to either. The one that has a weapon in it can have, can have no ammunition in it. So not one in the pipe, not any in the magazine. You know, you need to have them in two separate locked containers. But if you do that, and they're both out of your wingspan, I don't think there's a state in the country that will um, arrest you for having a weapon in your possession if you do it that way. Talk about why I carry. I carry why I carry is has very different in Maryland versus why I carry in Wyoming. In Maryland, it's strictly anti-personnel. It's someone who chooses to have a home invasion into my home or the home I'm currently someone else's home, or if I'm out in public and someone chooses to try to harm me or someone I'm with. Um, so I carry. A much different weapon in Wyoming I carry for two reasons I carry for grizzly bear and stupid people so it's different weapons I'm gonna let's go ahead and talk about what I carry in Maryland this is what I carry this is the whole package it's the weapon it's the magazine it is the holster all in one so this whole package is an inside the waistband. So what I have is this goes down inside the waistband of my jeans and my belt comes through here. I like this holster system. In fact, let's talk about the holster system. So the holster system, this holster is made by Sparks. I believe it's Idaho or Montana. The stamp says Idaho, but I thought it was Montana. It's 100% leather. I like leather more than I like you know any of the plastic options so this is a this is specifically made for the weapon it's specifically made to be inside the uh, waistband and it's specifically made to be made in, to be held in place with your belt i like this a lot of guys don't i don't really care i'm telling you what i carry if you want to make comments in my video i'd love it what i'd really like you to do is tell me what you carry and why you carry not why you don't like my decisions i really don't care it's not an opinion video you can certainly state what you like what you carry and why you don't need to tell me why you don't like mine i don't really care your opinion of what i do the weapon itself is a glock 43. here in maryland i carry the glock 43 my wife carries the glock 43x and in Wyoming, I also have a Glock 43X. I purchased this prior to the 43X's release, but I like it enough. I don't need the X. So um, it comes with six round mags. I carry two, so I carry 12 rounds with me. I can get a metal version of this that has more rounds, but I live in the People's Republic of Maryland, so I have to be careful. You know, I can carry up to 10 rounds in a mag, but I can't carry anything more, so I'm not messing with it. If, um, if you're running at me with a weapon and I can't shoot you down with 12, I'm, I got other issues. So I'm okay with that. So I carry Glock 43, six-round mag, spare six-round mag, 
I have the hollow sun red dot on it. Um, I'm a red dot man now, partially because I'm old at 60 years old. My eyesight, I can use iron sights, but I'm better with a red dot. So I've made the conversion over the last five or six years to red dots on my EDCs. Um, I'm just better out with them. I'm, I'm more accurate, more consistent. So that's what I've done. Um, why hollow sun? Don't really know. I mean, it's one of the names. I don't really consider one a whole lot better than the other anymore. Um, they take a beating. You know, every time you fire this weapon, the sight goes with the slide. So it has to be able to take a beating. I, I believe hollow sun has done that. Um, now it's it's religion now. Someone's gonna say hollow sun is the worst. And it's not. Someone's gonna say hollow sun is the best. It's not, but it works. So I carry a uh, all hollow point when I'm here in Maryland. I don't remember what grain this is. I don't remember what brand this is anymore. I'm really brand agnostic on ammunition unless my gun is not. This weapon is ammo agnostic. This Glock can fire any 9mm round. I've never had it foul ever on anything, so I don't really care. But So I carry uh, 12 hollow points with me at all times. Um, I don't remember what grain it is. Probably 120, 127 grain. Um, so the other thing is I've worked this enough that this is an, an easy weapon for me to... Uh, to rack that is something to be cognizant of if you choose to carry a weapon large or small the small are easier on your clothing the small are easier to conceal small can be hard to get a handle on it especially as we age our shoulder strength our grip strength so the smaller you get the harder it is to grip it the larger you get it the larger calibers have more stopping power the larger calibers have more ammo capacity. The larger ones don't have this grip problem like I do. See, my, I really can only get two fingers on this. Yeah, I know I can get an extended mag. Okay. Um, but then the larger ones have super springs. So you have to be careful about how hard the big guys are to rack. So anyway, those are just some components. So I carry the Glock 43. Why do I carry a Glock? I'm a Glock man. You know, there's SIG guys, there's Smith & Wesson guys. I mean, there's <laughs> I mean, there's all sorts of... Every brand has their uh, follow, and follow boys, yes boys. I'm a Glock man. I have been for 30, 40 years. I have the, pretty much the Glock family is, uh, is in my arsenal. Um, you know, I consider them... One of the most fired under anger, whether in law enforcement or military. I believe the Glock family has been fired this is as much as any other brand when it needs to work. Not just in someone's home, not just in someone's uh, range day, but under battle, actual battle tested. The Glock 17, the Glock 19 you know, some of the most fired weapons on the planet. So I'm not saying it's better than anybody else, right? I don't want to get into this debate about SIG versus Glock or Glock is antiquated or out of date. It is not. This weapon will do what it needs to do. I care about if I get into a stress situation, I pull it, it goes bang. This weapon will go bang. So the other thing I don't see us talking about much is cleaning the weapon and field stripping it. So I've field stripped the Glock 43 and I've got it here. So I'm going to turn you around and show you. And then I, I think a lot of people watching these videos don't understand barrel length. So when we talk about barrel length, what are we actually talking about? What piece of the weapon are we talking about? I'm going to show you that as well. So I'm going to turn you around. So this is what a field strip Glock 43 looks like. I mean, obviously, I've got our mags. I've taken all the ammo out. <clears throat> Lower unit, barrel, barrel, slide, and then the barrel. This is the barrel. So when you talk about a weapon being a 4-inch barrel or a 10-inch barrel or 
a six inch barrel. It's this piece they're talking about. This is the recoil spring. This is what causes the weapon to be able to, an automatic weapon to be able to load itself. This will always be metal in my opinion. This will always be metal. This will always be metal. That's plastic. There's, And then this whole lower receiving unit is pretty much plastic. This is your composite. When guns went from metal to composite or plastic as they call it, this is the part. The rest of this has to stay metal. These have gone plastic. So this is... This is all gone composite. That's what makes the gun so much lighter. It's also what makes the recoil harder. Anyway, I just wanted to show you what a field strip Glock looked like. I'm going to try and show you this thing being reassembled. So the first thing I do is put the barrel in. And put the spring in. That's what it's supposed to look like. And you just put this on the lower unit. These tracks have to go in, ah, uh, go in here. I don't know if I can try to do this really janky, sorry. Can't even see what I'm doing now. So it just goes on like that. All right, got that set up. All right, guys, it's been reassembled. It is loaded back in its holster. Spare mag is loaded. I'm back to being EDC ready. Alright guys, this is really all I wanted to do with this video was to kind of restart the weapons conversation. And I don't want to mix too many topics in here. I just think um, the seriousness of weapons, the seriousness of us keeping an EDC on us, the seriousness of concealed carry, I don't want to mix it with a bunch of other topics. So, safety-wise, I guess I should say this. Muzzle discipline, trigger discipline. Keep your finger off the trigger and keep the muzzle pointed away from everybody. If you do that, it's a safe weapon. Guys, that's it. If you can get a concealed carry permit, go get one. If you are allowed to own a weapon and you don't, I would go get one. I guess that's it. Um, that's it. We'll do other videos later today, guys. But that's it for Freedom Friday. Bye, everybody.